This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Tamiya's new Comet, Edward's Wildcat and all the extras, Hobby Boss's Coyote, Tamiya's new Ducati, Tacom's Silver Vogel, Ravel's Olds 442, and Edward's Spitfire Mark V C. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly look at the latest kits. I'm Aaron Skinner. I'm Kendra Bell. We have tons of great kits to get through today, so let's get rolling with Tamiya's A34 Comet. Developed from the Cromwell and entering service in January 1945, the Comet mounted a 17-pounder high-velocity gun. It served in Northwest Europe in the closing months of World War II and in the British Army until 1958 and other countries till the 1980s. The lower hull builds from the belly, a lower rear plate and nose, front and rear internal bulkheads with some details molded on, and inner and outer sides that sandwich the road wheel arms of the Christie suspension. Nicely molded, the road wheels feature separate hubs, as do the idlers, and drive sprockets. Return rollers and sharp link and length tracks finish the running gear. Remaining hull parts include the glasses, vertical plate for the driver and bow machine gun, upper panel with turret mount, engine deck with separate hatch and screen, and optional styles of Normandy cowling, as well as the rear. The driver and machine gunner's hatches are separate. After the fenders are attached, they get two-part front and single-piece rear sections, as well as partial sand skirts, stowage boxes, and tools. Tow cables are solid plastic with separate ends. The turret comprises a top, bottom, sides, front, with canvas covered mantlet that fits the one part main gun with two part muzzle brake. Small details and a bustle mounted stowage box finish the turret. The commander's and loader's hatches are separate and can be posed open. Well molded and posed figures fill the openings. Clear plastic is used for the turret spotlight. A small decal sheet supplies markings for two 11th Armored Division Comets in Germany in spring 1945. There's not been a plethora of Comet kits on the market, so this is a welcome release. Add to that the fact that this is a Tamiya kit and I expect it to fly off shelves. Here's a kit that has been eagerly anticipated by many, Edward's 148th scale Grumman Wildcat. This important World War II U.S. Navy fighter has only been kitted in this scale a few times, notably by Monogram, Tamiya, and Hobby Boss. Edward's initial release represents the F4, F3 with non-folding wing and four 50 caliber machine guns. Just when you can't imagine Edward's surface detail getting any better, along comes this kit with a combination of petite raised and recessed rivets and panel lines. The wings show the same detail with nice flap actuators and shell ejection ports underneath and sharply outlined inspection and ammunition hatches. All the control surfaces are separate, the unused taller rudder indicates there's an FM2 on the way. An area of Wildcats that has been hit or miss in past kits is the landing gear. Edward's attention to detail shows in the firewall that includes sturdy spars to attach the wings, engine mounts attach it to engine equipment, oil tank, operating chains, and the legs. The engine features two cylinder banks, push rods, and optional reduction gear housings. Three different cowls are provided. Cockpit detail includes the open floor and rear bulkhead, seat, rear frame with headrest and front frame with instrument panel, and side consoles. Photo etch metal fret provides optional instrument panels, seat belt, throttle quadrant, and intake screens. The clear parts include optional windscreens and different parts to pose the sliding canopy open or closed, as well as the belly windows and lights. Masks are provided. Decals supply markings for six Wildcats a yellow-winged bird from USS Ranger, a pre-war marine fighter with maneuver markings, Butch O'Hare's plane in which he shot down three Betty bombers in one mission, a marine wildcat on Wake Island flown by Captain Henry Alrod, a Navy bird from VF-42 aboard USS Yorktown in May 1942, and a marine fighter used in the Battle of Midway. As the wildcat shows, Edward continues to delight with its offerings. What's in this box will produce a first-rate replica. But if you want to raise the detail, Edward has you covered. 
As an alternative to the kit decals for panels, there's a set of 3D printed decals with glossy dials. Or you can replace the entire panel with a 3D printed pre-finished panel and the frame it mounts on from the Brassen line. Also in the Brassen line, there are two sets of wheels, early and late, with cast resin mains and 3D printed tail wheels. There are three styles of the latter. In addition, you can replace the plastic parts with finely printed resin exhausts and barrels for the machine guns. The kit's flaps are molded in the up position, but if you're up for a little surgery, you can install Edward's photo etched brass flaps that include framing for the flaps and their bays. As we said at the outset, this has been an eagerly anticipated kit, and looking at it and the available details, I'd say it was worth the wait. In spring 2021, we took a look at Hobby Boss's 135th scale Jackal high mobility weapons platform, a video you can check out in the link in the description. Hobby Boss has followed that up with the larger but closely related Coyote Tactical Support Vehicle, which is designed to accompany the Jackal on patrol. The 6x6 vehicle sports a large flatbed cargo area to haul combat supplies. With the commonality of the full-size vehicles, it is hardly surprising that much of the kit is the same as the Jackal, including suspension parts, cab and crew compartment, plating, and the weapons ring. You can see the details in the Jackal video. What's new here are the longer hull parts with nicely molded surface detail, details for the dual axle rear wheel wells, and a 50 caliber machine gun in place of the Jackal's 40 millimeter grenade launcher in the upper weapon ring. Decals and color diagrams show markings for two British Army trucks. Warning placards and dashboard dials are included. This is another cool AFV with a Mad Max vibe, and it would look really neat sitting next to a Jackal and a diorama. We have another new kit from Tamiya, a 1 12th scale Ducati Superleggera V4. Powered by a 988cc engine developing more than 220 horsepower, this bike can reach 200 miles an hour easily. Only 500 of this exclusive lightweight Italian superbike will be produced. Tamiya's motorcycle kits are mini masterpieces of engineering. This starts with the Desmo Zedici Stradale V4 engine. Molded in silver plastic, the block features detailed cylinders and transmission, separate heads, radiator and fans. The exhaust system is molded in black. The carbon fiber frame of the real bike is replicated in black plastic, as is the rear fork, wheels, and disc brakes. The rubber tires capture the minimal tread of the real ones perfectly. The bike's stylish fairings are molded in white plastic with crisp edges on the ducts. The complex shape of the fuel tank is captured with multiple parts, as is the cowl around the seat. The front cowl is a single part. Clear plastic supplies the windshield and lights. Masks are provided for the headlights. And typical of Tamiya motorcycle kits, Vinyl tubing is supplied for plumbing and brake lines. There is a spring for the rear damper and screws to secure some sub-assemblies. Decals supply most of the markings, so you should be able to paint the fairings red and then apply them. The areas that look black have a carbon fiber texture. Other sheets supply the badges and the dash displays, and red stripe and branding for the tires. Chrome stickers are supplied for the mirrors. This is an impressive kit of a fantastic bike and should make for a fun build. Next, here's Tacom's 172nd scale Sanger Brett Silberbugel suborbital bomber. Proposed in the late 1930s, the German rocket powered bomber was, in theory, designed to skip through the atmosphere across the Atlantic and bomb the United States. It never got beyond the mock up phase, but that hasn't stopped Tacom from kidding it. The bomber's basic design is reflected in the relatively simple kit. Four sections make up the body, rear, and center optional cockpit sections, and nose. The corresponding flat underside sections have molded heat shielding. The thin wings are single parts, and the twin tails are also molded as single parts for the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. Interior detail includes seats for either one or two place cockpits, wheel wells, and the bomb bay. Clear plastic supplies the canopy or windshield, depending on the version. Decals and color diagrams show markings for four obviously what-if options in a variety of cool camouflage patterns. There is a second version of the kit with ground equipment and a pair of atomic bombs. We've discussed Tacom's penchant for the unusual on the NPRD before. This is a good example and should be a fun build. From Ravel, here's a 125th scale 1971 Olds 442 W30. 
This hardtop kit shares parts with Ravel's 72 Olds Cutlass Convertible that debuted in 2009. Including the big V8 engine, a choice of manual or automatic transmissions, suspension, and chassis. New is the two-door hardtop body with good sculpting, door outlines that seem a little faint, and a nice detail under the hood. There's even headliner texture inside. The interior gets a rework with a new floor with rear shelf and molded upholstery that is carried through to front seats and the side panels. The clear parts include separate windshield and rear windows as well as lights. Also new are the decals with a choice of white or black hood and body stripes, interior wood trim, instruments, placards, badging, and a choice of Ontario or Alaska license plates. This is a great update of a good kit and should be really popular with fans of American muscle cars. Finally, let's take a look at the latest Edward Spitfire, the 148th scale Mark 5C. We've looked at several of the company's fantastic spits, including the dual combo Eagles Call Mark 5 kit in episode 193. You can see the details of the parts in that video at the link in the description. Instead, we'll focus on what's unique here, the decals which give markings for six aircraft. And a nice variety it is, including two variations of a Mark 5C flown by Wing Commander Ian R. Gleed, the latter with updated underwing roundels. The other options are a fighter flown by a pilot with number 312, Czechoslovak Squadron. Another from number 317, Polish Squadron with interesting wing stripes. An American Spitfire on Corsica in early 1944. A free French fighter with a shark mouth, always cool. And a Royal Air Force fighter on Malta in early 1943. As always with Edward, the hardest part is deciding which one to build. Indeed. Look for reviews of the Coyote, Wildcat, Comet, Oldsmobile, Ducati, and possibly even the Silvervogel on finescale.com in the near future. And while you're there, check out our other content including how-to stories and videos. And don't forget to download the October 2022 DLC, our digital issue. And thanks for watching. I'm Kendra. I'm Aaron. We'll see you next time. We've discussed Tacom's penchant for the unusual on an AMB. <laughs> penchant. What a bizarre way to pronounce a word. You gotta put the nasal in it. We gotta make it super American by pronouncing every single letter. <laughs> <laughs>